My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me and that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon for my sins and for the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Jesus, thank you that we can come and pray again today. Thank you that when we turn our hearts to you, you're already listening. You, were, you already wait for us in this moment. Thank you that you hold interest in our lives, in our details, in our family situation, in our friendships, in our work, in our studies, in whatever it is that I'm experiencing this day. Jesus, thank you that you love me there and you meet me there. And in this time of prayer, you invite me to tell you about it. That's a lovely thing about prayer is that, you know, God knows these things. God knows whatever it is that we're going to pray about. He knows all the details of our lives. So, so why pray? <laughs> we pray because he longs to hear it from our hearts. Somebody said that to me once, that when a child comes home from school and the child's mum or dad says, you know, what did you get up to today? They can pretty much guess. <laughs> they pretty much know what the child's been up to. Oh, you, you painted another picture. <laughs> you did that yesterday too. But they don't say you did that yesterday. They love seeing that day's picture. And the child loves to tell mum or dad what's been going on in school and who said what and etc. God, you love to hear the details of our prayer in our own words from our own heart. And we thank you for that. We thank you that you're such a, a present God. You're such an interested God. Your love is in the details. Your love is not generic and anonymous, but specific to me. It's specific to whatever's going on right now. Jesus, thank you for revealing that love of the Father in your life, your ministry, your word here on earth. At the beginning of this time of prayer, we asked for help. We asked for help to pray. We asked Our Lady, St. Joseph, and our guardian angel to intercede for us. And today we celebrate the feast day of some key intercessors in our lives. We call them the archangels. And scripture tells us about three of the archangels. Archangels, um, their importance coming from the, the, the message that they bring. It's an angel, meaning um, it's, it's what they do rather than who they are, says St. Augustine. So an angel is one who angels. <laughs> angel coming from the Greek word for news. So an angel is one who newses. Evangelion, we might recognize that, that Greek word, evangelium, uh, means good news. Eo, good, angelium, news. So an angel is one who brings news, an archangel is one who brings important news. <laughs> and so these three archangels, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, we celebrate their feast day today. And St. Maria had a deep devotion to the archangels. He loved the archangels. He loved the protection of and the prayer that they offered. So in Jose Maria, when he was founding Opus Dei, or or rather in the years after which he had um, seen what God wanted to do in Opus Dei, um, and as his own uh, idea around that became clearer and clearer, um, in 1932, so four years after he first saw this call to holiness in the middle of the world, so in Jose Maria was, was struck in... Uh, feeling called to entrust the formation he wanted to do with men and women in his local area to inspire them to call them to holiness in in the, the, the life they were living, the ordinary life they were living. He entrusted it to the three archangels. He felt prompted to do this during a retreat in October 1932. He said that St. Michael would look after the work that he would do with, with 
people called to celibacy. So people who had felt called to celibacy within Opus Dei, who were living in the middle of the world, he'd entrust that work to St. Michael. To St. Gabriel, he would entrust the work that he was going to do with, with married people. And to St. Raphael, he entrusted the work he wanted to do with young people. So, those who'd discovered the call to celibacy in the middle of the world, those who had discovered their call to holiness in marriage, and those who were young and uh, discovering, discovering what the Lord wanted for them in their life. So, why the archangels? Archangels are a, a key sign of protection in the scriptures. St. Michael meaning, um, literally in Hebrew, who is like God? Who is like God? Michael shows us something of the power of God. Gabriel, something of, well, we could say like the excitement of God. <laughs> you know, Gabriel is the one who brings the news of Jesus Jesus spoken of for the first time on the lips of Gabriel, spoken to Our Lady, spoken to Mary. Gabriel must have, Gabriel must love the mission he was entrusted with to speak of Jesus for the first time. Raphael, we hear about in the book of Tobit. Raphael is the, the accompanier. Raphael literally means the healing of God. And we see the, the healing action of God in that book of Tobit. Well worth reading if you haven't had a chance to read it. Jesus, the angels are those who reveal something of you to us. Just as we do. You know, we as human persons reveal something to each other of you, my Lord. The angels are, are pure spirits. This is what we believe about angels that they are uh, rational creatures. They're given free free will. Um, super intelligent. <laughs> super able to know what their decisions will lead to. And the angels are those who have chosen to serve. They've used their freedom, their free will to serve the plan of God. And so the archangels, key, key protectors for us in our spiritual life. And so St. Rosemary understood this. And so why do we need protection in the area of formation? St. Rosemary linked those two things together. He wanted to give formation, Christian formation, formation in how to, how to live, how to become a saint, how to know the teaching of the church better. And he knew, therefore, that area would need protection. It's true, isn't it, that when we draw closer to Jesus, Jesus, when we feel ourselves coming closer to you, when we sense the Holy Spirit moving us in a new way, sometimes that also comes with, with more difficulties. More difficulties seem to come our way just as we seem to get closer to you. Maybe something comes up in our life or someone in our life is unhappy uh, with, with what we're doing or um, it becomes harder to live some virtue that maybe was easier for us or, or whatever. So we need protection in that area. When we choose to be formed in the faith, we need to defend ourselves, we could say. We need the shield of, of God's protection, God's grace. And he loves to send his angels to protect us, to help us. All we need to do is call on them. We hear this in the gospel today. Nathaniel meets Jesus. And after a kind of interesting back and forth, Jesus, you say to him, you know, you've, not, you've seen nothing yet, Nathaniel. You will see, it says in the Gospel of St. John, truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Interesting phrase, and an important, it's an important phrase because it comes from the book of Genesis, where we hear this. Jacob dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven, and behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. So interesting. So it's a direct quote from the book of Genesis, but the important word for me is on. So the angels of God descend, ascend and descend on the ladder in the in the Gospel of St. John. They ascend, they ascend and descend on the Son of Man. The Son of Man being Jesus. So Jesus is the ladder. Jesus, you are the ladder connecting us to heaven. And in Christian formation, when we come closer to our faith through 
through learning things, through um, learning how to pray, learning how to uh, love, learning how to serve one another, learning uh, the role of the church, how important the mass is, all these things. When we learn these things, we come closer to you, Jesus. Our eyes are opened more to you, and you are our ladder, linking this life, the ordinary events of my of my daily life, when I give those to you, Jesus, and when I try to live for you in the middle of the world, I connect to heaven. And so we can be living the life of heaven. We can be living uh, already the, the something of the promise that you've given us. We can live that right here, right now, through offering our daily work, offering our, our ordinary events. And let's call the angels, the archangels, to our side to protect us, because we know if we choose to do this, we'll face challenge, we'll face temptation, we'll face... Um, struggle. None of these are the end of the road. And we can always come back to you, Jesus, and ask your grace once again. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you've communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.